Thank you very much. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be here this morning. Um, it's a, a bit of an occupational hazard, I'm afraid, for civil servants to be um, asked to step up at the last minute and uh, stand in uh, when ministers get called away to parliamentary and cabinet business, as, as David Heath has explained, is, is the position today. Um, and uh, as he said, both he and Owen Patterson really do um, apologise um, from their hearts. And I think you know, the fact that actually both were planning, intending to be here, um, is a signal of how much importance they do attach to forestry. Um, but there are just those occasions where Parliament steps in and, and that's what takes priority, I'm afraid. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here because um, I'm the person in DEFRA who's responsible for overseeing, directing the preparation of the government's response to the independent panel's uh, report. So a really good opportunity for me and some of my colleagues in DEFRA and the Forestry Commission who are also here today to, to, to talk to you. And it's a, it's a nice manageable number um, to have a really good debate and dialogue. Um, this speech is billed in the programme as a bright future from forestry, for forestry, and I'm not quite sure who came up with the title, but it does chime very well with the upbeat, ambitious direction of the panel's report. And actually, just talking to a few people beforehand with the buzz in the room and, and the enthusiasm and energy that I was picking up already this morning. At the event where many of us came together when the report was launched, uh, the panel's report, there was a, a tangible, I think, sense of excitement and enthusiasm in the room. And that's been something we've been determined to maintain while working on the government response. And I can say as a civil servant, that's despite something of a civil service uh, tendency towards death by analysis. Um, but no, you know, there, there was a real vision and ambition there which we're uh, aiming to stay true to. And, and also, despite the new challenges, uh, the new challenges facing us on tree disease, which I'll, I'll say a little bit more in a moment. So, on the panel response, we're now a little way over halfway to the end of January, when the government will respond to the panel, and a huge amount of work is going on, involving both DEFRA and Forestry Commission officials, um, to explore and analyse, not analyse to death, and consider options around all of the 31 of the panel's recommendations. I know there are some who've asked, why, you know, why on earth does it take so long? Why can't you just get on and do what the panel have said you should do? Um, and some of you, uh, quite a lot of people actually, have started to tell Owen Patterson that. Um, one answer is, you know, government simply doesn't work like that. But actually the fact is that the panel's set an ambitious and, and strongly aspirational agenda. Um, other people have views on it, and we're taking the time to, to talk to them, give them the chance to be part of the debate. Um, and some of the panel recommendations are far-reaching. Some involving the Forestry Commission and the public forest estate uh, would require primary legislation. And beyond those items that the panel put a price ticket on, there are quite a lot of others that will cost quite large amounts of money. So that obviously raises questions about how things could be paid for, and, and it's not something that we can instantly respond to. So no firm decisions have been made yet. Um, we've got uh, a new ministerial team who've only been in post a couple of months now, and both Owen Patterson and David Heath have made clear they want to be very closely involved um, in the detail before anything is settled. But they have confirmed that they stand by the commitment made by Caroline Spellman in the summer that the public forest estate will continue to benefit from public ownership. So they've, they've, they've reinforced that commitment that was made then. DEFRA and Forestry Commission officials have been busy since July meeting people from across the sector, including partners like yourselves from industry, civil society bodies, and various campaign groups. And those meetings have been hugely helpful in developing our response, and we'll continue to talk to all the interested groups and, and people who want to come and talk to us. We've also been encouraging people out there to join the debate through social media, and we've had a very enthusiastic response to that. Our new ministers, as, as David Heath mentioned in his video message, are starting to get out and about and really learn more about forestry. Next week sees our National Forestry Stakeholder Forum meeting for the first time, and that will bring together a broad range of interested organisations to discuss concerns and priorities. Both ministers will be there, she says, touching wood. <coughs> it is wood, isn't it? Yes. Um, the forestry industry is a key partner in all of this, 
both in developing the response and in the longer term task of establishing the new, more effective woodland culture that the panel made the case for. And it's true to say that we are at a crucial moment in terms of our forestry policy, a landmark as the conference title suggests. The panel presented us with a thoughtful analysis of the issues and effectively invited us to develop a new, coherent forestry policy to address them. I know that our ministers readily accept that challenge. They're also aware, as the panel said, that government cannot do it all. There are things that only government can do, and there are things that industry and other parties do far better than any government. Um, but there are many things that are best by done, done by people working together, and we're certainly ready to do our part, and we welcome uh, very much the signals that we'd be getting that many others, including many of you here, are willing to do that too. I wanted to say a little bit about tree health because obviously that's um, something that will be very much at the forefront of, of people's minds, I think. The panel recognised the importance of a resilient future for forestry. Um, we all know that increasing global trade and changing climate conditions have encouraged um, the, the encroachment of new pests and diseases. And these raise the stakes in the short term where we'll all need to focus on addressing these threats, but also in the longer term where we need to ensure that our trees, our woodlands and our forests are healthy and resilient. You all know that Kalara dieback of ash is now a major concern and you'll have seen, I think, that the Forestry Commission announced yesterday um, that there are confirmed cases in East Anglia not associated with recent planted nursery stock. And we in government are working at pace to establish the cause and the extent of Kalara. And we're also acting. We're working to ban imports of infected ash planting stock and to implement restrictions on the movement of all ash trees for planting to combat the new threat. Um, and we're hoping that that ban, uh, those restrictions, could come in as early as next week. That's on top of Phytophthora remorum, oak processionary moth, chestnut blight, and Asian longhorn beetle, the four other most recent pests and diseases. Fingers crossed, it looks as though we might be winning at least some of those battles on chestnut blight, on the outbreaks on chestnut blight and uh, Asian longhorn beetle. And we are in fact making good progress on many elements of our tree health and plant biosecurity action plan, including a new quarantine facility at Kew. We're looking actively at the actions in the plan to see what can be brought forward, reflecting one of the independent panel's recommendations. Our priority is keeping out pests which are present in Europe but haven't crossed UK borders. In October, it was announced that work with the Living with Environmental Change initiative has led to significant additional funding from others for tree health and biosecurity research, combined with that from DEFRA, DEFRA and the Forestry Commission. We also announced that DEFRA has put an additional £1 million into this research initiative increasing the overall DEFRA funding for tree health research to £8 million. We know we need to maintain and, where possible, strengthen our ability to deal with these threats. We've got a strong cadre of skilled forestry experts within the public sector, but that's not enough to address these significant threats. We need you, the timber industry and private woodland owners, to continue and increase the work you do too, hand in hand with us to identify, prevent and, and, and combat pests and diseases. I'd like to say a little more now, going back to the, uh, the panel report about some of the key recommendations, particularly those around woodland creation and management. Um, so those were two other very significant elements uh, and long-term elements of the panel's report. We would, of course, like to see the rate of woodland creation increase. We share that ambition. And this is one of those things that the government cannot and should not do alone. The panel's recommended increase from 10 to 15% coverage by 2060 sounds modest on the face of it. Some people have suggested it's insufficient. In reality, it would require a huge and an unprecedented step change in woodland planting. <clears throat> to achieve it, we'd need to cover nearly two thirds of a million more hectares of land with trees. And that would be, just comparing to present rates, a 500% increase on the current planting rate sustained over nearly 50 years. And if we relied on the public purse to pay for it through the kind of grant mechanisms that have delivered some recent planting rates, 
it would cost around 110 million a year over that long period, something like six and a half billion pounds over time. Now that shouldn't be interpreted as any lack of commitment to the panel's ambition to increase woodland cover, but I think it really does underline that a great deal of imagination and innovation will be needed by us all to respond to the panel's challenge. The panel also wanted to see more of England's woodlands manage better to fulfil their potential economic and environmental benefits. Again, we really support this aspiration and we'll be happy to work alongside you and other partners to create new opportunities for landowners to increase the proportion of woodland under productive management. As you'll know well, the UK is one of the largest importers of wood and panel products in the world, um, and those imports dwarf the proportion supplied by domestic producers. The panel's recommendation of a wood industry action plan aligns very well with the government's commitment in the Natural Environment White Paper to increase the use of sustainably grown and harvested wood products. We strongly support this objective. I'm pleased to report that good progress has been made so far in laying the foundations for such an action plan. Um, core themes in that plan are likely to be increasing the volume of English-grown wood used by society, so looking at, at the demand, strengthening and further developing forestry's contribution to sustainable economic growth, very much uh, in tune with, with the flavour of lots of policy at the moment, helping to bring more of our existing woodlands into productive management through increased market opportunities such as wood fuel supply chains, also generating more jobs, increasing skill and safety levels in the forestry sector, and ensuring um, future security of supply from the private sector to existing wood processing businesses, so giving, giving the business the security, the confidence that actually they can then develop their businesses on the back of that. I'd like to thank you for your valued input so far to those discussions around the Wood Industry Action Plan and I'd like to encourage you to continue to support this important work. The discussion will carry on over the coming months but I'm confident that we can produce a plan that will build confidence in the wood supply chain and with the sector fully behind it, deliver real change. So in conclusion, we've committed to responding to the panel's report in January. We're on track to do this but it won't be the end of the process, um, nor of the effort, actually, that will be required to deliver on those aspirations and ambitions. We, ministers, and we officials in the Forestry Commission and DEFRA, we want the response to mark a new era of positive and productive partnership with the sector to develop and implement the measures necessary, um, as David Heath said, to, to, to really get on this new track. Um, and to deliver the bright future for forestry that uh, we're here to talk about today. So thank you very much.